Hey guys, Mike from Black Dog Customs here. We're going to talk a little bit in this video about how your cooling system functions and how to troubleshoot it. Alright, the tools we'll be using today to test our cooling system is our multimeter, a jumper wire, and a blower to blow compressed air. Alright, so with the engine off, your fan clutch is normally engaged. If you can grab your fan and free spin it, then your fan clutch is bad and will need to be replaced. How the system works is when you turn your truck on, the Cadillac valve right here will supply pressure up into the fan shroud and onto the fan clutch, disengaging the fan. So you drive along, the engine heats up, your thermal switch right here, when the temperature reaches 220 degrees to 230 degrees, that will open the switch, telling the time delay module right here that it's time to cut the fluid in the solenoid thus engaging the fan again and cooling the truck down. When your truck gets back down to 190 degrees, this thermal switch right here will close, telling the time delay module to supply pressure again through these lines to the fan clutch, disengaging it. All right, so one of the first things we do to test the cooling system is we will unplug the time delay module from the engine harness right here. So it's the four pin plug uh, and you simply just pull the two apart. When you pull that apart, you should see the fan clutch uh, engage. And when you put them back together, you'll see the fan clutch disengage. And it's gonna move just a tiny little bit forward or backwards. But let's go ahead and try it now. Go ahead and start the engine. The fan clutch is engaging. Put it back together. fan clutch disengages. Pull it back apart, it engages again. So now we know the Cadillac valve is working and functioning properly. So the usual suspect that goes bad in these trucks is the thermal switch that's screwed into the crossover tube right here. How we're going to test that is with the engine running, I'm going to unplug wire 458A and 458B and you should see the fan clutch engage. Once we get that, I'm going to take the jumper wire that we showed previously and we're going to connect the two and you should see the fan clutch disengage. So let's go ahead and start the engine now. I'm going to disengage the wires and you should see the fan clutch engage. Now we're going to take our jumper wire Connect one half to one side of the engine harness. We're going to take and connect the other half. You can see the fan clutch disengage. I'll disconnect it. The fan clutch engage. Alright, so the last component we're going to test here is the Cadillac valve. This Cadillac valve, how you test it is you unplug the two plug wire on the end. We're going to ohm test it. It should ohm test between 58 to 78 ohms. You're going to take and connect the leads on both ends. And we're reading 75.3. We're going to flip it over. We're reading 75.3, which is exactly what we need. So the Cadillac valve test is good. If it tests anything outside of 58 to 78 ohms, the Cadillac valve should be replaced. Alright, so when you unplugged your Cadillac valve from your engine harness right here, if your fan clutch failed to engage, what you want to do to test it is you want to unhook the hose on the forward facing fitting on the Cadillac valve. This is the hose that goes up to the fan shroud up here. And what you want to do is you want to connect an air blower with a hose clamp to it and you want to apply 90 pounds of pressure. If your fan clutch fails to engage, with that 90 pounds of pressure, your clutch is bad and should be replaced. All right, so this is your thermal switch. It's probably the most common component in the cooling system that we see go out. It's also one of the easiest to replace. All you do is a little Teflon tape, screws right into the crossover tube. So one last thing, if your fan clutch is not disengaging, if it stays engaged full time, one test you can do is you can do a continuity test on this and you should have solid continuity through the switch. 
if you don't have continuity, then your switch is bad and you just need to replace it. Another thing that happens with these switches we see quite frequently is this switch is designed to open at 220 to 230 degrees and they turn back off at 190 degrees. So sometimes what we see happen is the switch sticks in there and again, it's an easy fix, just replace the switch. One last thing I'll say is when you're getting a thermal switch, Always get yourself an OEM switch from a reputable dealer. There's some aftermarket switches out there that are faulty, that don't open at the right temperatures, and they'll leave your fan clutch on as well. So I hope that helps understand some of the mysteries of the cooling system. This is Mike from Black Dog Customs, and as always, thanks for watching.